today we're going to talk about three films that I really like. This is massively Zana inspired. She made this film like a week or two ago. I think I'm a little bit behind. She said that she called it three films I really like instead of my three favourite films because she was terrified of committing to saying things were her favourites online. Actually, I'm stealing it from Zana and I think that Zana stole it from someone else herself. Who needs original content these days? Ayy. So here are three films I really like. I've always liked watching movies, I'm sure that everybody does, everybody has, um, but I've just found over the past few years, like more recently, I seem to enjoy movies a whole lot more these days and I don't know if that's because I think that movies have gotten better or if I've just been better at finding the movies that I would enjoy. <laughs> so I recently mentioned to Drew that I never get to see Oscar nominated movies and I want to. <laughs> So he's made it his mission for us to be able to see those and he's been facilitating that. So most recently we went to see Lady Bird. Three isn't enough for me, I get too excited, so hang around for some honourable mentions at the end. I came because I wanted to. People will say we're in love. So my first movie is Silence of the Lambs. I know that it's a slight curveball, <laughs> um, but this was really the first movie that I could ever say was my favorite movie. And this was years ago. I decided it was my favorite as soon as I saw it. And I still love it. Um, I love watching it. If you put the DVD on, it's just always, I always think it's fab. Science of the Lambs is about a woman called Clarice and it's her relationship with Hannibal Lecter. I was obsessed with this film for a while and I still love it and I could go deeply into all of the little details and the background of the movie. I want to keep this short and also I'm, I don't want to freak you out. <laughs> if you've seen the Hannibal TV series you need to watch Science of the Lambs in particular but this whole series of films is just amazing and you'll see how much better the movies are than the TV show even though the TV show is still fab. My name is Lady Bird. Uh, well actually it's not and it's ridiculous. Call me Lady Bird like Christine. you said you would. Just, you should just go to City College. You know with your work ethic just go to City College and then to jail and then back to City College and then maybe you'd learn to pull yourself up and not expect everybody to do everything. <laughs> Next one is a super recent one, just mentioned it, Lady Bird. Um, Lady Bird was written and directed by Greta Gerwig and it stars Saoirse Ronan as Lady Bird. Specifically in Oscars, Lady Bird was nominated for five, but it didn't win any, which is mad. <laughs> Greta is a great director and, I mean, who doesn't love Saoirse Ronan? I found Lady Bird magical as a character. The film sort of follows her teenage relationship with her mum. It's sort of a coming of age film, but it's better. <laughs> it's much more artistic than like films of a similar basis. Um, and it kind of feels like Lady Bird is growing up and she's becoming an adult just at the time that she's learning to enjoy being a teenager. So the whole thing is kind of like about being on that edge of things. It's just, it's really well put together and it's got great people in it and I love it. Would recommend. There's no holiday from this love. We will take a break, no, from this love. There's no holiday. Chef, this film makes me hungry. It fulfills me in so many ways. Carl is such a master of what he does and everything he cooks just looks so yummy. It's just, I love it. The film is sort of about Carl and his life as a chef and his uh, relationship with his son. His son actually makes a one second every day video. Oh, I don't know, it makes me so envious and it just makes me utterly ashamed of my monthly three seconds. And they have such a good time together over the course of the movie and then it sort of, it comes to the end of the summer and they have to go home and it like, it even makes me sad. Um, I just feel like I want to live in this movie. I want to be eating the food. I want to be laughing with the characters. 
I just want to be around the people, have an amazing time. The movie's just so fun and carefree in a strange sort of serious way. I have no other words for Chef. I love it. Alright, so I'm not concise enough to go for three and I couldn't just choose three because there are so many good ones. So we've got some honourable mentions coming at you. I was thinking that we'd start, I ask you questions, and you answer yes or no. Were you the mastermind that cheated the Olympics? Yes. The first one is Icarus. I actually discovered it just a few weeks ago, maybe a month or two now, and it's sort of a documentary film hybrid. So basically, John Fogel starts by making a documentary about athletes doping and how possible it is and if he could cheat his way to the front of this specific cycling race and everything sort of just gets extremely out of hand and he ends up hiding this guy Dr. Grigory Ruchenkov who is a head of the Russian Olympic athletes doping scandal. <laughs> I just found this mind-blowing they go into so much detail about everything they show blueprints of the buildings and they went through all of the schedules of how they managed to get athletes to come through with clean results i mean at the end i totally ended up siding with the bad guy i don't know even if you don't enjoy this film i think it's worth a watch it's just good to get clued up on stuff and it's really interesting Child, things will get brighter. Then bring it down hard. Someday, put it together. What are you doing? My second honorable mention and final film to talk about is Guardians of the Galaxy. I kind of just made a list of things that I love about Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'm just going to go through it. The use of music to create tension and diffuse tension and just make everything a lot more exciting. Basically, the music, the soundtrack of the film is fantastic. I listen to the soundtrack on Spotify regularly. <laughs> I love the thing where in a movie, somebody will have headphones in and we listen to the music and then they take the headphones out and the music goes quiet and Guardians of the Galaxy does this multiple times and I love it and it's so satisfying. It's just, oh, yes. Um, next thing, characters, Groot. Groot is the best character. How can a tree that has a vocabulary of three words be so amazing? And then not only that, but Groot and Rocket's relationship. I love how Rocket always knows what he's saying or what he's meaning. When Groot isn't Groot anymore and Groot is baby Groot. And he's doing his little, like, his little dance. It's kind of, it's not just a superhero movie. It's not just the big action scenes, but it still keeps the action bits there. I just love it. It's a different style. I think it's great. My final thing is like, usually the villains are just like bad guys and the good guys are just good guys, but they've all got their little complexities, which to me means that they're, they're not just good or bad, but they're more believable, which again adds to it not just being a superhero movie. So it's like you're not totally against the bad guys. Um, that's it. Those are the th three films that I really, really like and also two honourable mentions. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you go and maybe check out some of the films. Okay, we all know that was a shocking outro. I'm very sorry. Hope you enjoyed the vid and I'll see you soon.